G'day guys and welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. This week, as usual, I'll be giving you my round 22 tips and this week I found it particularly hard because there's literally about five or six games that I found really hard to separate. In particular, a lot of those games are gonna have a serious impact on the final composition of the ladder. So I, for one, am absolutely pumped for this weekend of footy. So like I usually do, I'll give you my tips and then at the end of the video, I'll show you what the ladder will look like if I get all my predictions right. So let's get straight into it. The first game of the round on Friday night is Melbourne hosting Sydney at the MCG. The Demons were tipped to get done pretty easily last week, but they didn't disgrace themselves against Collingwood at the G. The game was killed off fairly early, but the Demons sort of came back and made the margin a bit respectable at the end. It was just three goals. With just two games to go, and they're both winnable games, the Demons' motivation will be to try and climb out of the bottom two. Now, on the Swan side of the ledger, they backed up a promising performance against the Giants with a pretty average one against the Power in Adelaide. Youngsters like Heaney and Florent performed well, which is a big positive, I guess, for where they're at at the moment, but their side really Really wasn't in the contest all day. Like the Demons, the Swans have two winnable games remaining this year, although it does seem that climbing out of the bottom four is a long shot at best. Nonetheless, I've never known a Sydney side not to throw everything at a game. I'm expecting a gripping battle, but I think Sydney's going to get up here by eight points. Next up, we have Carlton and St Kilda at the MCG. Now, as we all know, out of nowhere, the Blues have suddenly become a half-decent side. In the past fortnight, they faced two stern tests against both of the Premiership favourites right now. They performed well in both games and actually kept both both margins below five goals. This week is a more winnable proposition for them coming up against the lowly Saints. Now the Saints pulled off a highly satisfying win last week in the dying stages against Fremantle. They've definitely been an improved side in their first month under Ratten, but it's unclear whether they've actually been better than Carlton over this period. The last time these two sides met earlier this year, the Saints won a low scoring scrap. I'm expecting the reverse result this time at the MCG. I'm gonna tip Carlton by 18 points. Next up, we have Brisbane Lions hosting Geelong at the Gabba. This is the first absolute blockbuster clash of the round and it's an absolute beauty with first taking on second and there's huge implications for the final ladder. A win for the Lions could see them take top spot by the end of the round while a loss could see them slip out of the top two. With a home final so important to both these sides, the stakes are really high. I think we've all been waiting for the Lions to just run out of steam, but it hasn't come yet. As for the Cats, they're just coming out of a bit of a slump of sorts with disappointing losses to Fremantle and Hawthorne in the last month. Their grip on top spot has definitely slackened and people are starting to doubt their premiership credentials. Last week, however, they responded fairly well and choked out North Melbourne in Geelong and held them to their lowest ever score. Personally, I still think the Cats are a major threat this year and the magnitude of this game means they're gonna have to rise to their best. That being said, I'm gonna give the Lions the edge here on the back of their home ground advantage. I think the Lions are gonna win this by four points. Next up, we have Adelaide hosting Collingwood at Adelaide Oval and this is another game that is really important to the final composition of the top eight. After some recent indifferent form, I thought the Crows went to Perth last week and played pretty well against a good team. They conceded a really high amount of inside 50s, but defensively they were sound and they were good scoring on the counter attack as well. They played like a side that was playing for their season and they're gonna have to bring that intensity again this week against Collingwood. The Pies had an odd sort of win over the Demons last week. They weren't really troubled and had kind of killed off the game in the first three quarters, but then took their foot off the pedal. That's all they really needed to do, but to be honest, it wasn't the most convincing performance. I'm actually gonna go with the home side here. I'm gonna tip Adelaide to beat Collingwood by 15 points. Next, we have North playing Port Adelaide at Marvel Stadium, and this is another dark horse for game of the round contender for me. North were embarrassed last week and held to their lowest ever score, one goal eight against Geelong. Personally, I do kind of think the result has been blown out of proportion slightly. Yes, they were pretty much beaten across all stats across the board, but GMHBA is a horror ground for visiting teams, and they also only conceded nine goals. They come up against a Port Adelaide side full of momentum who are looking to consolidate a spot in the final eight. It's hard to peg exactly where the powers sit right now because they've had two great performances against really struggling teams. I'll back North in to put on a really good fight here, but I think the power are going to be too strong overall with too much to play for. They're going to win this game by 22 points. Next up, we head to Perth and Fremantle host Essendon at Optus Stadium. Last week, we saw Fremantle virtually have their finals hopes snuffed out in the dying stages of the game. It was a cracking game of footy to watch for a neutral and a, Nat Fife was absolutely at his best and surely racked up another three votes there. There's definitely been a renewed effort level from Fremantle in recent weeks. Regardless of whether they can play finals or not, I think they're gonna wanna carry home that form into the end of the season. They'll be licking their lips this week because this is a big opportunity against an Essendon side that appears to have mentally checked out. We may have thought their huge loss at home to the power a few weeks ago may have been an anomaly, but somehow last week was far worse. 
At one point in the game, they trail the dogs who are lower than them on the ladder, 14 to 137. This to me is inexplicable and points to something really rotten at Essendon who are notoriously one of the most hot and cold teams I've ever seen. I reckon the Dons are in serious strife and I can't see them turning it around this week. I'm tipping Fremantle to win this game by 25 points. Next up, Richmond hosts West Coast at the MCG. Some are saying this is the grand final preview and while I don't know about that, I am definitely really excited to see this game. The Tigers come into this game on the back of seven straight wins and a fairly comfortable win over the rising Carlton. They also did it without Cochin and Martin, which makes it a little bit more of an ominous sign to the rest of the competition. Personally, I don't buy at all the possibility that Cochin and Martin are going to miss this week against the Eagles. You can bet your house on it they will be playing. Now, the Eagles have been red hot since about round seven. I think they've won 12 out of 14 games since then. Last week, they got a good challenge from a well-motivated Adelaide side, but did enough to get the job done. Personally, I think the Eagles match up well on the Tigers, and we know that the MCG holds no fears for them. If it's a wet game, which I think it might be, I think it could slide in favour of the Tigers, but I'm actually going to tip the Eagles for this one. West Coast going to win this game by nine points. Next up, we have the Giants hosting the Bulldogs over in Sydney. Now, again, this is another potential belter of a game between two sides I expect both will play finals. The Giants will be reeling after last week's performance in Canberra, which can only be described as pathetic. For me, that result has removed them from premiership calculations and they're playing for a home final at best. Now, somehow Toby Green has emerged as a potentially elite midfielder, but he's playing as a low hand at times. Contrast that to the Bulldogs who are looking quite ominous at the moment. Their fast finish against the Lions up in Queensland a few weeks ago impressed me and they carried that forward into the Bulldogs game and absolutely smashed them. In my mind, Bontempelli, McRae and Dunkley are the premier midfield trio at the moment in the competition. I'm expecting a game reminiscent of the 2016 prelim final in Sydney. I'm going to tip the Dogs to win this game by 8 points. We have our final game of the round at Marvel Stadium between Hawthorne and Gold Coast. And while this may be the least relevant as it's a dead rubber, it will be good to have a send off for Jared Roughhead. He's been an absolute champion of the game and there was a bit of talk that he might not get his send off, but it looks like he will this week. On the Hawks, they were sensational last week, flogging the Giants in Canberra in the snow. I've said it before, but I think the emergence of James Warple this year has been really huge and I can't believe how good he is for a second year player. He probably got three votes again last week. And what is becoming a bit of a familiar narrative is the Suns got battered last week against the Lions in the Q Clash. In their defense, the Lions are probably in the top two teams in the competition at the moment right now, so you can kind of forgive them. But I've said it before, I reckon the Suns are cooked for the year. I can't see them putting up much of a fight this week. I'm gonna tip Hawthorne to win this by 10 goals. All right, guys, that is the end of the round. So let's take a quick look at what the ladder will look like if all those tips are correct. With their win over the Cats, the Lions would take over top spot while the Eagles win would see them slip into second spot. The Cats fall out of the top two for the first time in God knows how long. They've been up there most of the year. While the Crows win over Magpies sees them into the eight at the expense of the Bombers. Now looking at the bottom 10, as you can see here, the Dons slump to 10th below even the Bulldogs. Other than that, the bottom eight actually remains the same, and it does appear that both Fremantle and Hawthorne remain mathematical shots for finals, although I would say that is highly unlikely at this stage. Guys, just quickly, it's also been ages since I've recognized the people winning our true footy competitions. Leading our footy tipping competition is Dave Gangel, who's been up there pretty much all year. He's on 121 points. He's ahead of Farmer Wants a Fife in second spot by just one, so we've got a thriller on our hands. Meanwhile, our AFL Fantasy League is still led by Chad Booth, who's just ahead of Killer Prad. Uh, Chad's averaging 2,200 points around this year, which is crazy. So well done, fellas. You've absolutely left me in the dust in both competitions this year. All right, guys, that's all we have for today. So I just want to say thank you for watching. As usual, I welcome your opinions on my tips in the comment section as well as your own. Like the video if you like it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Otherwise, I will see you very soon on the True Footy YouTube channel. Thanks.